Good morning, everybody. Today we will discuss about 2D heat conduction in a finite cylinder. Here we can see a finite cylinder and we will consider the following boundary conditions. At R equal to R naught, temperature is T1 throughout and then at z equal to 0, again uh, throughout the diameter or you know in the r direction, it is uh, at z, z equal to 0, t1. At z equal to l, it is temperature is t2. It may be a finite temperature uh, constant all over or it is basically excess temperature over T1 uh, which is a function of radius. So basically this side temperature is higher than T1 and at R equal to 0 that means along the axis at r equal to 0, theta is finite. So uh, T is finite. So temperature is finite uh, at the axis r equal to 0. Uh, at r equal to r naught, temperature is T1. At z equal to 0, temperature is T1 and at z equal to L, temperature is T1 plus Fr. Now, governing equation del 2 T del R2 plus 1 by R del T del R plus 1 by R square del 2 T del phi 2 plus del 2 T del Z2 equal to 1 by alpha del temperature del time. And here, uh, we have a rotational symmetry along phi, so we can neglect del 2t del phi 2. And therefore, uh, under steady state, first of all, uh, before neglecting that, under steady state, del temperature del time, 1 by alpha del temperature del time, this term is dropped under steady state. And of course, uh, we have said, already mentioned about it, phi symmetry. So this term can be dropped then, del 2t, del phi 2. And finally, we put theta equal to t minus t1. Then we can write del 2 theta del r2 plus 1 by r del theta del r plus del 2t del z2 of theta equal to 0. This is our governing equation. And then boundary conditions will express in terms of theta at r equal to r naught theta equal to 0 at r equal to 0 along the axis, theta is finite. At z equal to 0, theta equal to 0, domain is r greater than 0, less than r0. And at z equal to l, theta is fr, which is excess over T1 temperature. And again, domain is r greater than equal to 0, less than equal to r naught. So these are the uh, boundary conditions and this is the governing equation. Now we have to solve it. Uh, we now apply the separation of variables technique by assuming that the desired solution can be expressed as the product of two functions, one of which uh, depends 
only on R and the other depends only on Z. This is uh, basically standard technique of separation of variables. Uh, we assume the solution, final solution, is product of two function. One is function of R only and other is function of Z only. So theta Rz equal to uh, R into Z. Now, if we find out del 2 theta del R2, this will be uppercase R double prime into Z. Del theta del R, it is uppercase R prime into Z. And del 2 theta del Z2 is uppercase R into uppercase Z double prime. So, our governing equation now becomes 1 by uppercase R multiplied by R double prime plus 1 by R, R prime, all are function of R only plus Z double prime divided by Z, all are function of Z only. This is equal to 0. Then we separate out R dependent part minus 1 by uppercase R into uppercase R double prime plus 1 by R into uppercase R prime equal to Z double prime by Z equal to lambda square which is separation constant. Now from the Z dependent part we get Z double prime minus lambda square Z equal to 0 and obviously the solution is Z equal to A into E to the power minus lambda Z plus B into E to the power plus lambda Z. And R dependent part we can write as R double prime plus 1 by R, R prime plus lambda square into R equal to 0. Just we equate R dependent part straight away with lambda square, we get this. Now, if we look at the equation carefully, we can see a, this form matches with del 2y del x2 plus 1 by x dy dx plus y equal to 0. d2y dx2 plus 1 by x dy dx plus y equal to 0, which is Bessel's equation of order 0. This is Bessel's equation of order 0. And solutions are Bessel function of the first kind of order 0 and Bessel function of the second kind of order 0. And we can write R equal to C J naught lambda R plus D Y naught lambda R. C and D are constants. So, we have mistakenly written here Bessel's function. This is Bessel's equation. So, Bessel's equation of order 0 and its solution is Bessel's function and Bessel function of uh, first kind of order 0 and Bessel function of second kind of order 0. So, final solution is R C Bessel function of first kind of order 0 plus D, Bessel function of second kind of order 0, Y naught lambda R. So this is the solution. Now Z dependent part solution is given by 1 and R dependent part solution is given by 2. If we combine them, we get the complete solution.
But just before that, you know, to remind all of you, uh, we will just recapitulate the, uh, you know, uh, nuances of Bessel's function and Bessel's equation. Bessel's equation of order n is given by x squared d2y dx2 plus x dy dx plus x square minus n square y equal to 0. This is of order n and the its solutions are Bessel's function of first kind and Bessel's function of second kind and this is Bessel's function of first kind of order n and this is Bessel's function of second kind of order n. So we have discussed this already while discussing about fins, but let us again recapitulate. So this is Bessel's function of first kind of order n given by x by 2 to the power n and this is, this is a series uh, summation m equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 power m divided by factorial m into gamma. This is gamma function m plus n plus 1 into x by 2 to the power 2m. Similarly, we have written Bessel's function of second kind uh, of order n. Now, in this equation, if we put n equal to 0, this will be Bessel's function, Bessel's equation of order 0. Then solutions, of course, everywhere we have to substitute n by 0, then we will get solutions as summation of Bessel's function of first kind of order 0 plus a constant into Bessel's function of second kind of order 0. y equal to a plus j naught x plus b y naught x. And with the argument, Bessel's function vary this way. This is a variation of j naught and this is the variation of y naught with x, when x is the argument. So, now keeping this in mind, we will again come back to our solution. Solutions are, we'll go back by two slides. Solutions are, one is z dependent part, another is r dependent part. If we combine these two, we'll get the complete solution. And complete solution is equation 3, which is theta equal to C J naught lambda R plus D Y naught lambda R into A e to the power minus lambda Z plus B e to the power plus lambda Z. Now, we will start applying boundary conditions. First boundary condition we will apply at r equal to 0, we know theta is finite. Now, in this Bessel's function of first kind of order 0 and Bessel's function of first kind, second kind of order 0, this solution, we know that when the argument is 0, j naught is 1. But when the argument is 0, y naught is infinity. So in order to accommodate this condition that y naught 0 equal to infinity, we have to make d equal to 0. So we evaluate d. Having evaluated d, we can write theta equal to c. So we can here d is 0 we can straight away write from here this part into this part, multiplied by this part. So, C, C, J naught, lambda R 
into a e to the power minus lambda z plus b e to the power plus lambda z. Next boundary condition is z equal to 0, theta equal to 0. So we substitute z equal to 0, we get c j naught lambda r a plus b. So equal to 0. C j naught lambda r multiplied by a plus b equal to 0. Now this part, r dependent part cannot be 0, then we totally get rid of, uh, if c becomes 0, totally get rid of r dependence. So this part a plus b has to be 0. That means a equal to minus b. If we substitute a equal to minus b in this equation, then we can write theta equal to 2cb j naught lambda r into e to the power min minus e to the power minus lambda z plus e to the power lambda z by 2, which is nothing but sine hyperbolic lambda z. So, uh, <coughs> this, is, this becomes sine hyperbolic la lambda z and 2c uh, into b, combine them together, we define a new constant c into j naught lambda r sine hyperbolic lambda z. This becomes now theta, equation 5. Now at r equal to r naught, that means at the periphery, temperature is T1, so theta is 0. So R equal to R0, theta equal to 0. This gives, if we want to oh, substitute here, clearly this gives us uh, J0 lambda R equal to 0. So C cannot be 0, this part cannot be 0, so that means Oh, that means we will get j naught lambda r equal to lambda r naught equal to 0. And this, uh, I mean, uh, will be 0 as we know that the Bessel function variation, again, you know, we go back by one or two slides, you know, when Bessel function becomes 0 for those values, uh, you know, when it is crossing zero, we can clearly see you know, for uh, those arguments, those are the roots of Bessel functions, uh, first order of, uh, uh, first kind of order zero. So, J naught lambda n are not equal to zero for specific values of n. Lambda assume, assumes discrete values for which J naught, Bessel function of first kind of order zero. We have seen its variation. Uh, its value becomes zero for some specific arguments. And that is if it is represented by lambda n r naught, then we can say that those n's are one, two, three, you know, up, uh, will give uh, basically the value of Bessel function equal to 0 for specific values of n. Now theta becomes summation over n when n varies from 1, 2, 3 up to infinity. Cn j naught lambda n r sine hyperbolic lambda n z becomes theta. So basically theta value now we get for specific values of n, lambda n, so j naught lambda n r and sine hyperbolic lambda n z. So we can get theta equal to summation over n equal to 1, 2, 3 up to infinity, C n j naught lambda n r sine hyperbolic lambda n z. Now only one boundary condition we are left with 
that is at the top surface z equal to l theta equal to a far this is temperature over t1 we, we said t2 may be t1 plus a far or t1 plus some value which will give t2 that is the temperature on the top surface so here then at if we substitute z equal to l we will get fr so fr is then summation over cn j not lambda n r sin hyperbolic lambda n l and this sin hyperbolic lambda n l this value is you know uh, can be combined with cn and we can define a new constant an into j not lambda n r summation over this is fr and its domain is basically r varies between 0 and r naught so here within this domain we can define basically orthogonality and then we can say 0 to this is a requirement to express now this based on our uh, orthogonal functions that f r j not r j not lambda r lambda n r dr equal to 0 to r not a n then r j not square lambda n r dr so both the sides we are multiplying basically by r j not lambda n r and integrating between 0 to r dr then a r a n uh, series a n can be expressed as integral 0 to r not f r r j not lambda n r dr this quantity divided by integral 0 to r not r j not square lambda n r dr so if we can evaluate this part we are through we will get a n so basically in order to integrate this little more smoothly we are saying for the time being that a far let it be a constant value t naught that means t2 the temperature at the top surface basically you know in excess of t1 it is t0 in excess of t1 it is higher than t1 by a quantity which is t0 and then we can write a n is integral 0 to r0 t0 r j0 lambda n r dr divided by 0 integral 0 to r0 r j0 square lambda n r dr so just the previous integral we have substituted f r by t naught and now in order to evaluate numerator and the denominator separately we have to use two recurrence formulae of Bessel's functions now relation one is this is very well known the first recurrence relationship it is called ddx of x power n j n x is x power n j n minus 1 x now if we substitute n equal to 1 we can get ddx of x j 1 x equal to x j naught x just substitute n by 1 in this expression and from here 
we can write integral x j not x dx equal to x j one x. Just from here we can write, and we will make use of this uh, relationship in order to evaluate the numerator. We'll see little later. We'll do that. So recurrence relationship one, we will make use of it. And recurrence relationship two is integration between zero and a, a when a is the upper limit. X j n square lambda x dx is a square by two into j n prime lambda a square plus. 1 minus n square by lambda square into a square n square divided by lambda square into a square into j n square argument is lambda a. In this case, in our case, we have to evaluate this where upper limit is R naught, lower limit is 0 and integrand is this. So, 0 to R naught R J naught square lambda N R dr. Basically, 0 to R naught R J naught square lambda N R dr. That is what will match with this second recurrence relationship. Here we can just follow and write R naught square, this should be, please again, uh, excuse me for this mistake, please read this R naught square. We have also written it as R naught square in the next expression. So this is R naught square by two into minus J1 lambda N R naught whole square plus here, we can see this term will disappear for n equal to 0 and this is j naught lambda n into r naught. Upper limit a lambda a, this is upper limit r naught lambda n r naught. And in our case, j naught lambda n r naught, this was our starting point equal to 0. So this is eventually 0. And then we can write this equation will be left with R naught square by 2 into J1 lambda n R naught. Lambda n R naught is the argument and this is square. So this becomes J1 square lambda n R naught into, as I said, this will be R naught square. Please read this as R naught square. So R naught square by 2. Exactly R naught square by 2 j1 square lambda n r naught. This has become the denominator. And the numerator, uh, we have seen this is the uh, term. Here, if we substitute lambda n into r as xi, uh, we can write uh, uh, a n uh, xi equal to lambda n into r. So, a n equal to 0 to r. This will be t naught and lambda n into r is xi. So, r is xi by lambda n, xi by lambda n, z naught xi, d xi divided by lambda n. So T naught divided by lambda n square will come out 0 to R naught xi j0 xi d xi. So this exactly we can see matches with this recurrence relationship. X j naught x dx is x j1 x. What we get at, uh, get as our uh, numerator is xi 
j not xi dz so this will become straight away xi j not j this is basically x j1 x so this will become j j1 j so t not by lambda square j j1 j upper limit and we put the limit after integration is done we have integrated after integration is done we put the limit upper limit and lower limit upper limit and uh, lower limit and uh, uh, the uh, denominator uh, is r square by 2 r not square by 2 j1 square lambda n r not and then you know it's matter of just little bit of algebra twice t not lambda n square r not square and here j means lambda n r not j1 j j1 lambda n r not uh, r actually an upper limit r not r not so divided by j1 lambda n r not so a n becomes two times t not divided by lambda n r not r not r not cancels out lambda n one lambda n cancels out one r not it uh, can uh, cancels out divided by lambda n r not into one by j1 lambda n r not so this is an and an was cn if we recall into sin hyperbolic lambda n l so that means cn will be this series uh, summation over 1 to 3 uh, 1 2 3 up to infinity twice t not divided by lambda n r not 1 by j1 lambda n r not into so a1 into this quantity was cn uh, was right hand side cn into sorry cn into sin hyperbolic lambda nl is basically an so cn will be this quantity divided by 1 by sin hyperbolic lambda nl now since cn has been evaluated we can now that was the only remaining part if we look into our uh, equation c uh, this cn was to be evaluated so uh, now we can write theta equal to twice since cn is given by this so twice t not by r not summation sin hyperbolic lambda n z divided by lambda n sin hyperbolic lambda n z into j not lambda n r divided by j1 lambda n r not this is the complete solution so this is the final expression for the temperature distribution at any r z location within the domain and we may recall that we said while posing the problem while posing the problem we mentioned that t2 is t1 plus a far so t2 minus t1 is a far and here we have taken a far as a constant value t not we can take that as also a function of r so whatever it is we can say that part is t2 minus t1 so is basically the excess temperature over t1 is t not which makes t2 so theta rz at any rz is given by t2 minus t1 divided by r not into 
a series. The series is uh, extended from for values of n 1, 2, 3 up to infinity. This is sine hyperbolic lambda n z divided by lambda n sine hyperbolic lambda n l into j naught lambda n r divided by j1 lambda n r naught. So if we substitute r and z coordinate correctly and maybe we take first three n values or first two n values, we will get correct distribution of theta on the domain of interest. So that is what was our task basically two-dimensional heat conduction in a finite cylinder. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interest. Thank you.